President Biden and the left spent the lead up to the vote ginning up a fear that there was going to be voter suppression, that all of the election reform efforts that took place post-2020 was designed to keep people from voting. But now that we see record turnouts in many of those places, well, that's kind of dropped off. But here is a question. Why do some states perform better than others in counting the votes? And why is it in this age of technology that we're days, days after the election and still waiting for the results? Joining me now to discuss this and much more, Ken Blackwell, Senior Fellow for Human Rights and Constitutional Governance at the Family Research Council. He previously served as the mayor of the Queen City of Cincinnati and treasurer and secretary of state for Ohio. Ken, welcome back. Hey, Tony, good to be with you. Welcome to uh, Southern California. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they could use some help counting votes out here. <laughs> Several uh, congressional seats still uh, undecided. So let's talk about that for just a moment because a lot of people are asking this question. Well, I mean, look, this is the age of technology. But a lot of things have happened in the last four years that have made election counting and tabulation a little more difficult. Yeah, you know, Tony, I go back. I, I always refer to a chapter in a book by John uh, Nesbitt, a megatrend, where he talks about high technology, high human touch. Uh, yeah. see, what has happened, I think, in this age of high technology is that the, we've started to lose the, the human touch of elections. Elections you mean in our, we can't count anymore? <laughs> <laughs> We've been relying on calculators? Elections in our, in our country have, over the 247 years, they've been very um, localized uh, human engagements. Uh, and so uh, th th there's been an election day, you know, not an election month. Uh, right. It's happened at the precinct level. It were neighbors, no neighbors, uh, and there is a greater sense of people are who they claim to be. Right. Uh, and two, you you don't have a lot of hands touching your ballot. We we celebrated the the, the privacy of the ballot and the sanctity of the, the voting box. And so we've moved away from that. And I, I I'm at a point now where at the turn of the industrial age we had luddites, people who just broke machines, you know, because they didn't understand them, didn't appreciate them. I think I'm at a point now where I would be a 21st century Luddite because I, I think we moved. I think going we, back to the paper ballots? I, I, paper ballots, election day, except for yeah. a, a voters That's who just can't get out. So but to, to help people understand what's happened is COVID really accelerated this. And, and, and they did this voting by mail. Uh, and, you know, dropping off ballots and ballot boxes. And as you said, that's high touch. People have to pick those ballots up. They've got to count them. They've got to transport them. They've got to do all this stuff with them. Uh, voting by mail for those states that, uh, you know, people pointed to, uh, I guess, Oregon, Oregon Washington State. state. Mm -hmm. But they prepared for that. It took them, in, I think, if I'm not mistaken, like a decade in Washington State to make that transition to a all vote by mail. And so what you've had in across the country, you've had these changes take place at a really rapid pace, at a rapid pace. The infrastructure hasn't been keeping up with, is that? Yeah, and, and, and remember this. You know, I am the co-chairman of the International Foundation for Electoral Systems. Yeah, you travel all uh, over the world. All over the world looking at, at, at elections. Uh, we are the only country in the developed world that uses vote by mail to the extent that we're, we're, we're using it. Really? Uh, yes, you know, and so. So you mean, you mean even in, in, in Europe? That's right. Those progressive countries? Our, 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 our neighbors up north, Canada. They, why, they, why, they, so uh, why is that? Well, first, let's, let's be honest. A good year for the U.S. Postal Service is a 95%, 96% delivery rate. That's what happened to all my Christmas cards, then, right? So, and, and that's why I didn't get General Boykin's uh, card today, wishing me happy birthday on the Marine Corps birthday. But uh, anyway, so no, anyway, but you know, so so this this in itself is is so uh, okay. So is the reliability of the mechanism of vote by mail, just the right. post office itself, right? That's a problem. That's a problem. Yeah, the, and the, the other thing is that too many hands has have to touch. When I say high tech, high touch. I'm talking about neighbors talking to neighbors yeah. and knowing neighbors, not 
we don't want too many hands touching the ballot from yeah. the time that the, the, yeah. the, the, the voter cast that ballot until it's counted. In, in this system, too many hands are touching. Okay, now let me be very clear on this because you and I have talked about it. You're, you're not suggesting that the reason we're taking so long to get this, that there's some kind of shenanigans going on. You're just saying the process is very drug out and very slow. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. The, 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 the process is more vulnerable to human error. Yeah, you know, right. Uh, and uh, that's, that's a problem in and of itself. But just because we now have, as you said, no longer election day, but election month, We've got ballots coming in. We've got ballots coming in after Election Day in some cases. Absolutely. And we, so we have a, even a greater ballot security challenge. Yeah. You know, when, in fact, those ballots have to be under lock and key. But see, that's what the, that's what the, the Democrats want, that type of a process, an expanded, multi-touched process. Am I correct? I, oh, I think so. That's what they're... One, because what they figure is that if you have a, enough confusion... Uh, if you have tight margins, you, you get b ballots uh, or vote counts in the era, uh, in the area right, of what I call right, the right. era of uh, just Just litigation. natural human error. That's right. Okay. So do you think we could ever go back to an election day? I don't, I don't know if we can get, get it back, all of the toothpaste back in, in the tube. Yeah. But I actually think that we, and we should really, and there are, a state legislatures that are basically saying uh, election month is is kind of crazy. A little much, yeah. yeah. And, and so I think they're going to look at how how you shrink that, uh, how you get tighter security on those uh, ballots that have to be delivered by by mail. As you've said before, easy to vote but hard to cheat. Easy to vote but hard to cheat. So let's talk about this new paradigm in voting where vote by mail, drop-off boxes, uh, expanded voting. How, and, and by the way, uh, I, I want you to address this as well. There were precinct watchers, ballot uh, uh, poll watchers all across this country more than ever before, and I think that had a profound impact yes, upon yes. this election cycle because we haven't heard a lot of stuff about, you know, shenanigans going on. So... Is it a matter of adjusting to the new landscape and figuring out how do we dispatch people to make sure that these elections are, in fact, fair and free? Yeah, I, I always say, if you're not in the room, you're not in the game, which means that, you know, both sides uh, in our two-party system have to have eyeballs on every aspect of the process. Yeah. You know, both parties. Yeah, yeah right, absolutely, right. To, to build confidence right. in the result. Right. But those who want to tear down our constitutional republic they start with tearing down confidence, confidence in our elections. But we've seen the, the exit polling from this election showed that uh, people had a higher level of confidence in the election. It was because we had more people engaged. Right. Uh, and, engaged we, and, and we had a number of laws, reform right. laws, that were passed a in the last two years. Absolutely. And, and that's why it's so strange that, you know, what we saw uh, two years ago, what we saw this year, this season, people saying that, the simple common sense practice of a voter photo ID was somehow voter suppression. Uh, it didn't work. It, did, it, it, it didn't prove out in evidence. Right. You know, so if people want to say follow the science, follow the science. People have more confidence in systems when they know that only legal ballots are being counted. Right. right. And that people who cast those ballots are legal voters. Yeah. And photo ID is so commonplace. Why would anybody be opposed to that? Well, it's just because they would, you know, it's the same choice between do you believe that America is stuck in 1619 or do you actually think that we evolved in, in, in 1776 and now in 2022, we're, we are a different, more robust well, uh, you're, you're, a little more, you're a little more generous than I am. <laughs> I, I think the reason people are opposed to very practical procedures such as a a photo ID is because they want to, they want to cheat the system. They, they, they want, want to be able they want to be able to manipulate it. They want confusion. Yeah. They, they don't they don't want clarity. And and what we're talking about is is common sense practices yeah. and policies that you got to do build confidence go, and and, and you, you got to do it when you go to the bank when you go to the <laughs> airport. I mean, look, there's nothing more important than casting your vote. All right, Ken Blackwell, I want to talk now about, all right, we don't know everything from 2022. We're still counting the ballots, and, but we're pretty confident that Republicans will have control of the House. We don't know the, the margins they'll have. could be very, very narrow. 
going to make it a headache for Kevin McCarthy if he is, in fact, selected as the speaker. That's in question. Um, but what's this mean for 2024? What, what are we looking at in 2024 in another, not only a congressional election, but we'll be in a presidential election here? No, I, I, I think this is going, it's going to be a robust con, con, uh, test uh, in 2024. You know, voters are going to have some contrasting uh, vision. So what, what, probably what more America so. is. Probably more and, so. That's right. And so I, I, I think what it, what it says is that we have to stay engaged. You know, we have to, in fact, make sure that all of the polls are covered, that, you know, there are eyeballs on every uh, aspect of the system. Uh, but I think it, it becomes very important for both parties uh, to, in fact, promote their uh, platforms yeah. so that people have clear choices. Right. You know, and that's why I think, you know, as, as a Republican, we have, to po we have to paint in bold colors. We have to draw the contrast to our vision for America, our aspirations, and give voters a choice. And then the voters have to, in fact, engage. I mean, you've been at this for a while. Okay. A bit. You've been, I mean, you go back uh, in the 80s, you were mayor of Cincinnati. Mm -hmm. There was a time when there wasn't a big difference between the parties. I mean, there was a difference, but it was marginal. And, and you wouldn't see a radical shift when one party took control over the other. But it is like the pendulum of a clock now that it swings because the parties... I think do have a very strong contrasting ideological worldview. You know, I, I, I do, and I don't think that that is necessarily unhealthy as long as you. Well, it's have, a reality. Uh, yes, it's a reality. It's a reality that it's, I think we have right. to face. That's right. And and so what you what you want uh, is you know an even playing field, and you want right. you want right. people to 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 a engage. A fair playing field. That's a fair a fair playing field, and and that's why it is so important that people and parties speak clearly in terms of their vision because that, that inspires people, that engages. You know, human engagement, and we, we've said it before, you know, is, is, is what this is all yeah. about. And the human condition is not a spectator sport. That's you just what, can't that's what, on, I mean, that's what I say all the time, that our republic was not made for spectators. <laughs> it right. is made for participants. But in particular, speaking to, to our audience of uh, what we call sage cons, spiritually active, governance-engaged conservatives. And by the way, if you don't know if you're a sage con, uh, you can actually take the sage con quiz. You can text the word sage con, S-A-G-E-C-O-N, it's one word, sage con to 67742. 67742 will send you a link. You take the survey and you'll get the results as to whether or not you're a sage con. So sage cons, there needs to, they are motivated not by personality and politics, but rather by the policies and the direction of the country. And I think going back to, as you said, that it's not necessarily a bad thing. I, I mean, look, it's, it's like the, the parable of the wheat and the tares. You know exactly what you got out there. And, you, it's, and to use another biblical analogy, uh, Elijah saying, you know, make a choice. How long will you falter between two opinions that he said to the, the Israelites on Mount Carmel before he took on the prophets of Baal? But I, I think we have to realize that every election is going to have one of the consequences will be that we will have a party that will then begin to shape the policies that are 180 degrees from the other party. Yeah. And so our freedoms, our ability to raise our families, to teach our children, to love the Lord and to know him and to live that faith out in the broader society is at risk in every election. Oh, absolutely. And, and, and we know that the difference between our constitutional republic is that God is at the central, is central to it. Uh, and all of the totalitarian uh, states that I've ever visited, they try to run God and faith out of the public square, crush the family uh, and make people more dependent. Not free citizens, but right. subjects. Dependent. And so it's so important that we stay, we stay engaged. And I, let me just say this about this last election. Uh, it, it, it wasn't a tsunami, perhaps, uh, but there were major victories. And we cannot let the yeah. devil, we right. cannot let the devil, you know, this right. steal our, our joy. Yeah. We, we can't. And, and, and something that, uh, and we're up against the end of the program, but uh, Pastor Gary 
Hamrick said yesterday is that, hey, we saw Roe overturned. We didn't expect some kind of backlash from the devil. <laughs> That's right. Ken Blackwell, yeah. always good to see you, my Tony, brother. Tony, always good to be see with you. See you tonight. All right.